another interesting video on Lawvisor. Today we would be focusing on the topic mitigating risks of cyber security issues in M&A transactions. A revival in M&A transaction is seen after the decline last year and due to increasing use of technology cyber security will play an imperative role in unlocking M&A deals. Cyber security due diligence is now considered as a fundamental element as it helps in identifying and remediating the risk associated with M&A deals. To discuss this, we have an expert with us. We have Sonali Singh. She is Senior Manager Legal at Cognizant Technology Solution. Welcome Sonali. Thank you for taking out time for us. Hi everyone, yes indeed it is a very very interesting topic, mergers and acquisitions. So uh, before I dive into more details, I'll just touch upon the topic of what exactly is the importance of cyber security due diligence in mergers and acquisitions. So uh, typically see mergers and acquisitions enable companies to add more products and services to their portfolio. It in a way gives them to scale their business. Uh, for this, it becomes extremely important for them to understand the assets and the liabilities that they're going to assume, including the digital ones. So with the help of cybersecurity due diligence, we can really identify and remediate any uh, risks associated with the target company. It helps the acquirer check the quality of the protections that the acquiring company has over its data, however it is stored, whether it's dig digitally or whatever. So, you know, earlier the companies could effectively, so the earlier the company actually evaluates the cybersecurity risk as a part of the m and process, the better they'll be able to evaluate the total cost of the assets and the liabilities. So, you know, frankly, regardless of the size of your business, it is very important to have cybersecurity measures because we are living in a digital age. And, you know, with the convenience that it brings, it also brings more responsibility and liabilities. You know, one has to be more cautious. Um, cyber security is gaining recognition now as a fundamental element. It helps in assessing the risk in a particular transaction before assuming the liability. It helps in identifying if there are any issues that may warrant restructuring of the deal. It helps the acquirer get more knowledge about the type of data and the extent of data and the security measures that the target company is really adopting. Uh, we all know that more and more data is created each year and companies are constantly storing more data and across the globe, you know, whether you talk about cloud. So what we really need cybersecurity due diligence to do for us is to make sure that the data of the parties involved is not breached and the privacy is maintained. Uh, the consequences of data breach are largely based on the sensitivity of the data that is involved. Now, if you talk about protected health information or you talk about any other kind of sensitive data, most of the countries now have extremely stringent data protection laws. So the consequences will also be accordingly. Um, Sanya, talking about the process of due diligence, you know, um, conducting cybersecurity due diligence actually requires a significant amount of preparation analysis and research. So there are a set of activities that need to be considered while you conduct a security, uh, cyber security due diligence. So first in that, I would talk about risk sensing. Uh, the acquiring company needs to capture the maximum information possible about the security, the technology landscape used by the target company. This could include uh, new projects that are underway. Uh, it could involve the infrastructure setup, the applicable laws, the information that is there in the public domain or the social media for that matter. This helps in understanding the business operating model and how to prioritize the focus area from a cyber risk perspective. Uh, once this process has been followed, the other step that we need to be watchful of is an expert group discussion. Uh, the acquiring company needs to dive deep and understand the security controls that are in place for the prioritized areas. Uh, these are areas that include cyber insurance. It could be use of any technology standard, whether it is GDPR, whether it is the payment card industry, uh, payment card industry data security standard, and various other legislations. 
the next uh, process, you know, the next stage in this process is acquiring the, the acquiring company can perform external scans to really look for any critical information, public domains, websites, including the dark web, which I cannot miss. Uh, it, is, it can actually also run threat reports based on technological information which is available to them. And it really gives them an external perspective about the target company. The next step that is involved in the cybersecurity due diligence should be performed, but is not a mandatory step to perform, uh, which is penetration testing. Now, like I said, it's not mandatory. The acquiring company can actually ask the target organization to conduct an external penetration testing of the web facing applications or infrastructure by independently organizing and you know, uh, uh, arranging the results which can really be used to create the risk profile of the target organization. The next step, which is a fairly complex activity, is of collecting evidence and reviewing. Uh, this is complex because the target companies do not usually share much evidence of existing controls with the buyers, citing that we are bound by obligations of confidentiality. However, the acquiring company should try to collect as much information as possible to build a substantial risk profile because it is these pieces of evidence that could be in any form of security policies. It could be audit reports. It could be assurance and compliance certificates, management reports, so on and so forth. Once we have followed all these processes, oh. finally comes the stage of risk profiling. After considering all the inputs that we receive, uh, it is important to put this together in the form of a report. Now the report needs to highlight the key risk and if at all there are any corresponding mitigation steps. The report needs to cover whether the risk is expected to be mitigated before or after signing the deal because that is what will determine the way forward as in how much liabilities get added, whether the deal needs to be restructured, so on and so forth. Uh, the report should also cover whether the risk is expected to be mitigated before the deal or after the signing of deal. The findings of a cybersecurity due diligence, they could actually impact the deal value. They could impact the terms and conditions of the agreement that is going to lead to uh, you know, the finalization of the deal. So um, as soon as a merger and acquisition news actually begins circulating, which is very fast, the cyber criminals actually look and they find backdoors into one or the other party's network and systems. So leveraging a security weakness at this stage really gives them a short term and a long term benefit. They can gain access to the merged or the acquired entity, even uh, notice security weaknesses and fix them. So they can also hide in the networks and systems post the merger and acquisition. And since they can exploit the vulnerability, they can actually um, have access to the sensitive information of either or both parties. Um, in this case, it actually becomes very critical to understand the nature and significance of the target's vulnerabilities. Intruders can actually operate from anywhere in the world. And by stealing, changing, and actually destroying the critical corporate information. So, you know, this can have very, very, um, very, very detrimental consequences on the data of both the parties. And frankly, no enterprise is immune from cyber attacks. None of them are impregnable. So no matter how hard you try, you know, the hackers will still find a way to, you know, introduce some vulnerability into your system and actually take advantage of them. Um, talking about the challenges, Sanya had also point out, um, looking at the kind of transactional difficulties that we've seen in a few mergers and acquisitions, I'll just point out about two case laws. Uh, there is Neiman Marcus, which is a luxury departmental store. It encountered a cyber incident as early as July 2013. The incident actually involved injection of a malware into the retailer's customer payment processing system. This compromised the customer payment card details of about 350,000 customers. This could not be unraveled or discovered very soon. Just days after, uh, 
in October, I think July, uh, the acquisition happened in October. And after a week or so, when it was unraveled, Neiman Marcus actually had to face a class action suit and had to get into a um, settlement with the customers. And this was a strong beating. So, you know, the parties need to be aware of the risks, not only as the, as you see them today, but, you know, even something that has happened months, years or days back that can have, you know, consequences much beyond the deal actually gets materialized. Um, another cybersecurity incident, which is a very interesting one, was a case where the Marriott International was acquiring the Starwood Hotels. Marriott announced its plans in 2016. The deal took place and a few days, just within a few days of the merger and acquisition having been completed, it was discovered that the Starwood systems had been compromised in the year 2014. The breach was uncovered in 2018. And what happened here? What happened was the personal data of about 500 million guests was compromised worldwide. So the UK ICO actually fined Marriott with a GDPR penalty of about 99 million. So when we see cases like this, we can actually figure out how important it is to ensure that cybersecurity due diligence has been done in good time. See, as businesses slowly start opening up and we move towards the pre-COVID growth levels, mergers and acquisitions are also gradually reviving and they will continue to revive. Um, I'll talk about the latest M&A trend survey, which was conducted by Deloitte, which calls out that 61% of the US deal makers expect that the M&A activity will return to pre-COVID levels within 12 months. Globally, um, an all-time record of 1.7 trillion in MNAs were announced through the first four months of 2021 itself. And this is 124% higher than the last year of the pandemic. Uh, over the past few years, cybersecurity has started playing a bigger role in MNA. Uh, several acquiring companies, they've suffered hefty losses as they realized that the target company's past data was breached. And they realize it only after the completion of the um, transaction. They've suffered financial fines, they've, you know, reduction in the target company's overall deal value, which could have really been avoided. In the post-COVID times, I could tell you that this issue has compounded an MA transaction because our dependence has really, you know, it, it, it's more dependent on collaborative tools and technologies. Moreover, the whole concept of, uh, you know, remote working coupled with increased data breaches, privacy, cybersecurity regulations across the globe has shown that cybersecurity cannot be done away with and in fact needs to be imperative. It needs to be given more, um, more importance rather than just doing the basic level uh, um, due diligence. You know, since this pandemic started, we have heard about, I had only heard of COVID coming in waves. You know, I didn't know that malware also comes in waves. So malware coming in waves, ransomware coming in waves, and there is no way that you can actually curtail um, uh, cyber attacks. You can't do that. All you have to do is you just have to ensure that your uh, security measures are on point. Uh, because of COVID, I think remote working became a necessity. Having said that, remote working had already been happening, uh, maybe out of choice or out of no choice, but right now it was a pandemic situation. But when you're working remotely, there are more security issues. People manage, the hackers, the, um, the cyber criminals, they manage to find loopholes, cannot be 100% um, uh, protected, but at the same time, we'll have to keep ensuring that our uh, securities are on point and there should never be any miss on the cybersecurity due diligence.